Hello, this is Faith of Faith in Books, and I'm going to talk about uh, documentaries to watch during Sustainability July. So I started a read-along for July called Sustainability July, and I don't know who's participating. I certainly am. I know that another channel, and I'm going to mispronounce your name. I'm so very, very sorry. I feel very ignorant, but I think it's Hamza Vahini Vajra Asram. Is that right? Anyway, I will link to her channel because she did a pile of possibilities for um, Sustainability July. This is inspired by Plastic Free July, which is something that started in Australia years ago and has gone global. And what you do is every July, you challenge yourself to give up some sort of plastic in your life. Um, usually um, uh, single-use disposable plastic is, is the first target and then you try to reduce it. Once you accomplish that, you try to reduce plastic more and more. Um, so anyway, so this inspired me to do um, uh, this read along Sustainability July because I find uh, sustainability such an important and, uh, you know, to me it's just very interesting and very compelling. And so the uh, topics of sustainability and conservation, um, I think, are worth doing a read-along about. Uh, to, trying to spread the word so that we consumers can be um, educated and realize that we have a little bit of power and that we can choose to do the right thing. And um, we're very, at least where I am, we're very, uh, you know, settled into everything being about comfort and convenience and keeping up with the Joneses and doing the, the latest trend or trying out the latest thing. And we do not think about the consequences of our actions. It's very much like an ostrich, you know, burying its head in the, the proverbial sand. Um, and so it's just good to always keep up, um, you know, the idea of taking responsibility for our choices, trying to find better ways, put pressure on these giant global multinational corporations that are so exploitative um, and kind of lull us into this sense of um, that doesn't matter. You know, we feel this intense disconnect uh, between what we do and what it does to others or the planet. So, so anyway, so I thought I would do a list of documentaries, some that I have seen and some that I'm interested in seeing. And this is not an all-inclusive, I might have left some off. Um, and uh, I think I'll list them in terms of the issues they address. So the first thing, which is tied to Plastic Free July, is, um, this is a very short one, it's just under 12 minutes. It's a TED Talk given by Beth Terry. She was an activist, you know, I think back in the, I don't know, 20 teens, early 20 teens maybe, and she wrote this book, uh, Plastic Free, How I Kicked the Plastic Habit and How You Can Too, and she gave a, a well-known TED Talk, um, very short, she's a very nice person, very down to earth, and it's inspiring, um, and so just if you don't do anything else uh, documentary-wise, you can watch this TED Talk, which is on YouTube, and it's only like 11 minutes and 56 seconds long or something like that and she's engaging and she gets her point across um, so that would be the first uh, the second movie that I've seen I saw this at a church uh, was called bag it and you can just uh, google that bag it documentary film uh, they have a website I I'll uh, link below to the website, but I think maybe you can just watch it on YouTube or Netflix or something. Yeah, I'm not sure if it costs anything. It might be free, but that's a really engaging um, documentary because it's very hopeful, but it's very informative. It's family friendly, um, and it, you even laugh during it. It's just a really well-made documentary, very likable people in it, um, just addressing the issue straight on and looking at the practicalities and, and the challenges of someone who wants to try to avoid a single-use um, disposable plastic in their life and just what an uphill battle it is. So bag it, the, the movie or the film, I highly recommend that one. Um, another movie that I saw that my own church um, 
showed was the empty bin project and that was a couple up in Canada and they decided to for a year I think it was they were gonna see how much um, how little trash they could throw away they challenged each other so they each had a trash can the guy had one trash can she had another and then they were gonna spend a year trying not to throw away anything and then at the end of the year they compared um, and it, it, it was also a very engaging and informative um, movie. I, I um, enjoyed it a lot. I think Baggett maybe was slightly more effective and slightly more um, maybe appealing to families. But, uh, but the Empty Bin Project was excellent. And um, that couple did another movie, which I'll mention later, which I really liked. And then, um, was, that the, was that it for my... Let me see if that was it for my plastic focus. Yeah. Okay, so that was, so uh, Beth Terry's TED Talk, Baggett and Empty Bin Project. Then that couple that did the Empty Bin Project did another one called Just Eat It. And that was an analysis of our whole food system and just how much waste, there's an incredible amount of waste that goes on in our global food system. Um, it's very, very problematic. Um, and that was, I found that, like if I was comparing Empty Bin Project and Just Eat It, they're both good, they're, they're both really good. But I just found, maybe it's because I didn't really know about the food problem, so I found Just Eat It really eye-opening. Um, so I would recommend that one if you're concerned about the food industry and all the waste going on in that. Um, let's see. All right, so another one um, that has to do with farming and the problems that we're having with farming um, is that, and I went and saw this with my son a few years ago called The Pollinators. He came out in 2019. Um, and that was a documentary that was in, in selected theaters. And I don't know, you might have to rent it or buy it. Uh, but you can see the trailer at least on YouTube. And that was about the problem with the demise in our um, pollinators. And we need pollinators to have food. Like I think it was 70 or 77% of our food is pollinated by bees basically. And if we kill off all the bees, we will have a big problem because you cannot hand pollinate. <laughs> they have not figured out how to take the bees places yet in that in that uh, process. So, um, so the pollinators was a good movie about that. Um, and the problem is glyph glyphosate, which I just heard the Ninth Circuit just um, ruled against the EPA saying that the EPA was negligent in um, allowing glyphosate for um, for human consumption because there has been all these, um, uh, what is it, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which they, there's a lot of evidence tracing it to glyphosate. So the farm workers are, who are working with this glyphosate are getting this cancer. Um, and then we have a heavy load of glyphosate. If you don't buy organic, you're getting a lot of glyphosate. Uh, you know, you're consuming it. So, uh, so anyway, they just ruled, so we'll see what happens with that, because um, Roundup is like the world's most popular um, insect, or what is it, herbicide. So, um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and, and that's what's been killing off the bees. And uh, we've also had um, um, diseases, a disease come from other countries that have been uh, decimating the bee population as well. So... I mean, my next door neighbor just came and sprayed for mosquitoes. And you know the mosquito spray, it doesn't just kill mosquitoes, it kills every, everything. And I have like all these pollinator gardens, I'm seeing hardly any bees or butterflies. Now it is chilly, it's cool, but I can, I mean last year at this time, my, all my milkweed and everything was just covered with, with bees and butterflies, and this year, nothing. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, so The Pollinators is a good movie to see, and that's also tied to, well, a lot of it's going to be tied to farming. Um, so I'm not going to really, I mean, you can look at other things. Like, I'm not focusing so much on climate change here. I think if we change our ways, you know, first of all, I think we've gone too far, and we're going to have to come up with ways to deal with flooding and, and all the things that are going on because of the shifting climate and weather patterns. Um, 
So that's just what we're going to have to deal with. But also, um, I think if we if we focus on sustainability and conservation, I think it will um, kind of solve itself. It's a it, it's the same problem, right? Um, so if we have better farming practices that are regenerative, or if we if everyone becomes locavores and starts uh, gardening, uh, we're going to capture a lot of carbon, right? And so um, you know you sort of you can come at it kind of obliquely, I think, and and really be part of the solution that way. Um, okay, so these are the documentaries that have to do with farming. I highly recommend The Biggest Little Farm. That is a really interesting, well-done documentary. The guy was a filmmaker, maybe maybe did documentaries, and he filmed portions of his life over many years. Uh, he and his wife decided to move out and start farming, and they didn't know anything. And they bought this farm, and they had to learn how to farm in a regenerative way. And it documents all their frustrations, and uh, it's just a really good film. And uh, I highly recommend it. And I see that being advertised like on Netflix and stuff, so I don't think that's gonna be hard. I think you might have to rent it or buy it. Um, then there's another um, documentary about this, and this is a Christian one, about this guy, Paul Gauchi, who developed this Back to Eden garden methoding, <laughs> gardening method. And you can find that, that might be on YouTube. Um, but it's called Back to Eden. And basically what he does is he just uses wood chips and, and that breaks down and enriches the soil over years and you don't have to do all the tilling and you know putting in fertilizers and all that stuff to garden well. So that's not so much farming, but it's it, that's gardening. And then let's see if I can do this in somewhat of a better order. Um, if you're talking about regenerative farming, there is a documentary called Polyfaces, uh, which is done by an Australian team. But Polyface Farm happens to be in Virginia, where I live, in Stanton, Virginia, um, or outside of Stanton, Virginia. And uh, Joel Salatin is one of the, you know, he's like a, a world-known uh, mover and shaker when it comes to regenerative agriculture. And so uh, that's a, and I've not seen that movie. That would be interesting. I don't think I've seen that movie. Could I possibly have seen it? I'm very familiar with Joel Salatin, and I have seen lots of stuff about him, um, but I'm not sure if I saw that particular one. Uh, but that, he would be a good guy, if you, especially if you're in the U.S. He's a good guy to learn about because he's quite the character. One thing that I love about um, regenerative farming and permaculture is that it really doesn't break down along the left-right tribal lines. Uh, you can have really conservative people like Joel Salatin, and you can have really like far left people, can't think of an example, and they agree. I mean, they're, they're, they, both of them can support this regenerative farming, this permaculture, because it really speaks to just humanity and, and common sense and respecting creation or respecting the environment. Um, and so I love that it's, it brings people together who might in other ways be really politically um, at odds with each other. I think that's something very refreshing about it. And I think that speaks to the truth that it offers. It offers real truth um, and it, it is not easily, environmentalism lends itself to breaking down along party lines. Permaculture does not. Regenerative farming does not. Um, so I, I really like that aspect of, of uh, learning about this uh, facet of, of uh, sustainability and, and conservation. So anyway, the next one is um, just a documentary that these people did, it's, uh, and you can find it on YouTube, Permaculture Made Easy, and it's just, I think it's a couple hours long, I think it's on YouTube for free, and it's just a guy explaining the principles of permaculture. Um, I've seen parts of it, I have not seen the whole thing. Um, another one is, uh, yeah, okay, so there's, um, a small independent film uh, company called Happen Films, 
and I think the um, YouTube channel is Living the Change, and they made a documentary called Together We Grow, and that's also about permaculture. Um, so, you know, I haven't watched that either, uh, so I don't know about that. Then another one um, that I have watched, and I've been following this uh, YouTuber for a long time, is uh, Justin Rhodes' The Great American Farm Tour. So he and his, at the time it was four kids, he, his wife, their four kids, converted a school bus into a mobile home, basically, and they drove all over the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii, and they visited farms that use these regenerative practices. It's incredibly interesting. They did it for a whole year and I watched their YouTube channel that whole year and it was really, really amazing. He did a great job of summarizing it into just a, like a feature film length. Um, but really, really interesting stuff. And Joel Salatin is in that one. A lot of um, well-known regenerative or permaculture um, farmers are in that, including I think Paul, uh, Paul Gauchy. Um, so that's that's a really enjoyable, and that's family friendly, because um, it's him with his family traveling and visiting all these different farms, all these different types of people all over the country. And that I think you can rent or buy on Amazon. Uh, I think that might be all I have in mind. Oh yeah, and then this is really theological, but there is a professor at Regent University up in Vancouver, I think, and he, his name is Lauren E. Wilkinson, and he started this, like, I guess one of the earliest eco-theology programs. I watched, I, it was either two or three parts, or maybe four parts, it was a series that he put out, really, really deep stuff, really wonderful, very thought-provoking, um, but I watched it in a church setting, and I can't seem to find it, like, for public viewing. It, it's like it's set up maybe only to be rented by churches and then to show to their congregation. I, I don't know, but you can see the trailer at least. He's such an interesting person. The trailer for it, I think it's called Making Peace. I forgot to write my name down, but I think it's called Making Peace with Creation. Lauren E. Wilkinson, and you can at least watch the trailer on YouTube for free. So those are my uh, documentaries that I'm that either I want to watch or that I've seen and I recommend. I sort of want to watch Sea Spiracy, um, but my son and husband watched it and they thought it was, they just laughed at it because they thought it was very propagandistic. You know, a lot of these um, documentaries that come out, they're very ideological and they're kind of, um, you know, singing to the choir and they don't, uh, they don't realize how um, over the top they are and <clears throat> they just they just said there was just like a lot of appeal to emotion and a lot of like policies like that just baked into it um, so uh, so they didn't like it but that intrigued me I would like to watch it just to see what my understanding of that particular movie or what my re response or reaction to it would be the other one which is kind of a classic is a, a what's it called an inconvenient truth. But again, I think that has the same problem to use Al Gore, such a highly political person that a lot of people don't like, um, as sort of the main, <laughs> the main uh, diplomat, you know. Um, and the thing about that movie that just bugged me so much, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced about climate change myself, but, um, back when that was, it was called Global Warming, when, when they made that documentary. But uh, I just think he was the wrong spokesperson. I, I have so much trouble with environmentalists because even though I consider myself when I'm so devoted to this cause, but I think a lot of times it's about belonging to a group as opposed to actually trying to solve problems. And I think they, um, a lot of times they're their own worst enemies. They don't realize, the wind is really picking up, uh, they don't realize the way they come across to people that haven't been convinced yet. And, I, and that, that one, just everything takes place in either a cab or an airport. Like, who knows? 
who knows how responsible Al Gore is for for a carbon in the atmosphere um, because of all the traveling he does in that in the inconvenient truth. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so I have problems with that. I, I you know it's if you want to watch it or if it really spoke to you, great. That's great. But I wouldn't that wouldn't be my go to to introduce people who are maybe just coming to this subject. Because, like I said, I think a lot of times if you're ideological about this, as opposed to just issue-oriented, uh, then you don't really know how to come across well in a way that reaches people that are coming from a different place. Uh, so, yeah. All right, so that's my own oh, 20 minutes. I had no idea this was going to be that long. Oh, and I, I just wanted to quick show you. I'm going to read these today. Uh, what a waste. These are children's books about the pollution problem. And I'm going to read this one too. All That Trash, the story of the 1987 garbage barge and our problem with stuff. Oh, that reminds me. One last documentary. If, and I'll, I'll list all this below. But the story of stuff um, is, is a website. And they have, a great, they have some great uh, movies or films or documentaries, short ones too, that are very educational. I, and I find them really good. Oh, and, and I forgot to mention one more. There's a wonderful, beautiful um, animated movie that I think is French called The Man Who Planted Trees. And that is delightful. It's just gorgeous aesthetically. And it would appeal to children as well. Um, so, yeah. All right. I'll list all these below. And, um, you know, I hope you join in Sustainability July. I hope you at least try to reduce your plastic. Go to the Plastic Free website. See what you can do. This is such an important topic. I'm even more passionate about it now, now that I have grandchildren. I don't want to leave, you know, I don't want to make the earth a, dar a garbage dump uh, full of toxins and, you know, all kinds of chemicals that, that harm the health. Um, I want my grandchildren to know about, you know, elephants and rhinoceroses and all those things. I don't want them to all go extinct. Um, so yeah, so um, anyway, so be talking to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.